Well, the Tesla Model Y has been around for over a year now, and we're getting ready to see what we could be considered version two of the Tesla Model Y. Now, of course, over the last year, there have been a number of changes to the Model Y, and Tesla does not follow suit with the other automotive companies in which they hold changes for new model years. Tesla does, of course, implement new changes on a rolling basis. So whenever things are ready, they just implement. Now, this week has been full of some interesting updates that we're hearing from Elon Musk and that we're seeing at Giga Austin. First and foremost, we are hearing that Giga Austin is still on track to be open later this year. Now, once it does open, we're hearing that it is going to start with production of the Tesla Model Y. Shortly after, about a month later, then the Cybertruck will begin production. And just as we're getting those first initial details of the new Ford F-150 Lightning, the Cybertruck continues to show it is going to be a strong contender in the pickup truck market. So of course, there's three options. You have the single motor, the dual motor, and the tri-motor, starting at 39.9, 49.9, and 69.9 respectively. The single motor is going to come in at 250 miles of range, 7,500 pounds towing, zero to 60 in six and a half seconds, and will be coming late 2022, so more than a year from now. The dual motor is going to come in at 300 miles, 10,000 pounds of towing, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, and it'll be here later this year. Then finally, the tri-motor at 500 miles, 14,000 pounds of towing, zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, and also coming at the end of this year. Now, of course, if you're like me, you think the Cybertruck is very ugly, but on paper, it is amazing. And one thing we've learned from Tesla is when they put these specs out, they typically exceed them. So I don't think that there's any major concerns about being able to achieve these incredible numbers. After all, the F-150 Lightning highest spec is going to come in at $90,000 and only get you 300 miles of range. So for substantially less money, you can get a Cybertruck, more capability, more range, and of course, the supercharging network. So again, the Cybertruck is going to be amazing. And yes, we do have one on pre-order, although I still think it is ugly. It is growing on me somewhat, but it is just going to be an incredible car for a number of reasons. So that is all very encouraging as we're seeing Giga Austin continue to make excellent progress. We just got some leaked photos of what appears to be the Model Y casting out of Giga Austin. Now there was a lot of discussion around where was this thing going to be implemented and it appears that while they're doing this construction, they've been working on implementing that new casting for the Model Y, which is going to be coming very soon out of Giga Austin. So with all these new updates and these leaked photos, it begs the question, if the Tesla Model Y is indeed going to start at Giga Austin before the Cybertruck, what battery cells is it going to have? This is something we've been talking about for a long time in the Tesla world. Is the Model Y out of Austin going to come with the standard battery cells that are in it today? Well, fortunately, we now have some answers directly from the man himself, Elon Musk. He did reply back to a tweet confirming that the Model Y will only come with the 4680 battery cells out of Giga Austin. So that means this year, a Model Y will be produced in the United States with the new battery cells. So this is certainly a change from what we've previously heard where Giga Berlin was going to be the first Model Y with those 4680 cells, and then the US would follow in a year or two thereafter. Now, they could still be the first to be into production with that new battery cell. However, instead of waiting a year or two for them to perfect that, it sounds like things have changed and they have ramped up their production schedule. So. The 4680 cells are just around the corner here in the United States, which is incredible news. And speaking of the 4680 cells, let's just do a quick recap from what we learned on battery day. Now this was last year and some of these numbers could have changed since then, but this is what we know so far. Those new battery cells are going to come with five times the energy, 16% more range, and six times the power. Now, earlier this year at the Q1 earnings result, Elon Musk did say it was 12 to 18 months out from production volume. So either that means we're going to have limited production and they will only be pumping out enough vehicles that they can cover, or this means that they are much farther along that timeline than they have been communicating to date. Now, we must also keep into consideration and not discount the fact that both LG and Panasonic are both working on implementing production of the 4680 cells. 
So this is all part of the bigger picture and hold on to that thought for a moment because I have a theory. So there is a new generation of production methods that is going to be implemented, including the batteries, but it's bigger than that. There are a number of things that are going to be implemented that in conjunction together are going to take Teslas from today to a very different car that we're going to see in the very near future. So here's what the breakdown looks like. We anticipate seeing the battery increase range by 16%. An additional 20% should be made by the anode material alone. Another 4% by the cathode material. The cell vehicle integration, which is that body casting, will bring in another 14% efficiency. So that's a total of 54% improved efficiency over today. So if we just took it at what it's worth and value on paper, just like that, at 326 miles today, if we added 54% to that, that's over 500 miles. Now, I don't think that that's realistic and it's going to phase in on some of these. Of course, all the battery implementations are going to happen likely at front, but there's a number of other things that have to happen to bring this completely to that 54% target. And that's assuming they can achieve that 54% target in real world application. So if you look at just the batteries alone and the density that they can hold, that's 16%. So that gets you to almost 380 miles just in that one improvement. So I think that a 400 mile Tesla Model Y is very likely coming just around the corner. Now, of course, there's no guarantee of how this is gonna be rolled out and Tesla could very well just reduce the size of the battery pack with these new cells. That would keep the range about where it's at today and could potentially reduce prices. And of course, there's also the concern about capacity. So if 4680 cells are not into volume production by the time this starts rolling out, they're gonna be really hard to come by. So it makes sense that they would reduce the total capacity of the battery, at least at the beginning. The other missing piece to this puzzle is what happens at Fremont? There's no indication that the new battery cells are into any level of production. But again, remember, we already talked about this. LG and Panasonic are already working on production lines. So could they be leveraged and used to help support the Fremont factory while Tesla uses their Giga Austin plant to make their own batteries? I think that there's probably something there. We don't really have any clue as to how well LG and Panasonic have been going on this journey to developing these new cells. So it's not clear on what a timeline would look like and when they could be at production capacity numbers to help support full volume integration. I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Phantom Wallet. Phantom Wallet offers premium wallet designs with an aluminum chassis with options of wood, leather, and carbon fiber finishes. Grab the cards you need with a quick flip of the lever, RFID and NFC protection are built in, ensuring a safe and secure alternative to traditional options. Make sure to use code BTG to save 10% on your order. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. Could Tesla be getting ready to launch a new version of the Model Y? That would be kind of interesting. As in, could they be coming up with a Model Y a long range plus model? Now Tesla has done things like this in the past, but when they've done it, they've removed the previous model altogether. So as an example, just a couple years ago, Tesla did improve the range and efficiency on the Model X and Model S. They introduced a long range plus model, but at the same time, they eliminated the standard long range model. So they could either do this or they could offer both options side by side. And given the discussion we just had about the availability of 4680 cells to also support the Fremont factory, I think there's a real chance that there could be multiple options of the Model Y in a long range and a long range plus option. This would mean all the long range models would be coming from Fremont while the long range plus models came from Giga Austin. This is kind of exciting, but how much would it cost? We don't have any clue there either, and all of this is just speculation. The one thing we do know is the 4680 battery cells are coming, and they are coming this year because limited production is supposed to start in 2021 on both the Model Y and the Cybertruck. They are only going to be shipping Model Ys with 4680 cells out of Giga Austin. So only time will tell if we're gonna have increased range or if we're gonna have the same range with a much lower price tag. Either way, these new battery cells are going to perform exceptionally well. These cells are going to be able to take heat for a much longer period of time. That means you're gonna be able to charge at a faster rate for a longer period of time. That's going to reduce your supercharging time. 
In addition, they're going to be able to withstand the cold a lot better than the existing cells as well, which means in the winter, you're not going to have as much impact based on those cold temperatures. So in the end, these are going to be a longer lasting, better performing battery cells, and they are going to continue to create a wedge and a gap between Tesla and the competition. This is perfect timing as all these new EVs are making their debuts and trying their hardest to steal thunder from Tesla. Tesla is getting ready to pull the trigger and implement this next generation of batteries which will obsolete everything before it. So then that leaves you with the question, what should you do? Are you sitting on the sidelines waiting to order? Have you already ordered and you don't know what to do? There's a number of things to really consider and the biggest and most important thing that you should first consider is there is always going to be something new coming. And at Tesla, things have changed rapidly over the last decade. They're going to continue to change rapidly as we move forward into future years. So there's always going to be the next thing available and the next thing coming. If you never jump onto the train, you'll never get into a Tesla eventually you've got to pull the trigger. Now, admittedly, the 4680 cells are a leap step in improvement in the Model Y, but at some point you've got to take the plunge. So if you have not ordered yet, I would still hold out. If you have ordered, you have two options, take delivery and just enjoy the car when it gets there. On the other hand, you could put a hold on your order. Now that hold can only be held for about six months. So it's not likely that you could potentially get your hands on this car in six months anyways. And that brings us to the other piece of this equation, which is demand. Demand is through the roof and reportedly Tesla has already sold out 100% of their capacity for the entire quarter. So that demand is strong right now and it's only accelerating. So though, if you do not take delivery, you're going to continue to struggle for getting your car in a timely manner. Those lead times are going to continue to expand and I am confident that once that new battery cell comes out, whatever changes that makes to the Model Y are only going to further drive up demand for Teslas. And then finally, there's the EV tax consideration, which those EV tax credits, we have not had any solid updates on for quite some time. So it's kind of hard to say what will happen with those. And there's a lot of disagreement in Congress about that right now. And until somebody makes a final decision and pushes something forward, we won't know for sure if Tesla's will begin to start getting those tax credits again. I would really think hard about when you hope to get into a Tesla versus these other benefits that you could potentially get down the road. In summary, everybody should make their own decision and it is not an easy one, but you only live once and the longer you wait, the longer amount of time you could have been enjoying the car to begin with. So make your own decision. I wish you the best of luck. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it the thumbs up. It helps out tremendously. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.